In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I hope you are all uh, doing well, my friends. You know, if there is ever a Sunday where all of the readings are amazing, well, this is the Sunday. One of my favorite stories in the Old Testament is the story of Moses and the burning bush. It is packed with the human dynamic of a first encounter with God. God sends Moses a sign. It's a burning bush. God calls him, Moses, Moses. Moses turns aside from his path and goes over to see this interesting sight. What could it be? Moses is curious. And then a voice. And I like to think at this point anyway, that it's a booming voice that says, stop, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place in which you are standing is holy ground. Wow. Can you imagine? Holy ground. What an amazing image. Have you ever been there? I'm pretty sure that I have. And for me, it's like a state of mind. Am I always in it? No, not really. But when I am, I am in communion with God. I am in communion with the universe. I am in the presence of the glory. And it feels good. And sometimes, though, it feels a little daunting. Of course, it's not always easy to get my attention, so that means that my ears are not always open, and sometimes my eyes are shut to either hear or see the signs that God might be sending me. Does that sound like you too? Well, if that is the case, then one of my favorite musings about the story of Moses is this. How many times did God send the burning bush to Moses before it caught his attention. Two times? Four times? Six times? Or was it only the one time? And if Moses had missed it, then the people of Israel would have been slaves forever in Egypt. Well, I believe and think that God is always sending us messages. God is always calling us to either do something or be something or challenge something or change something, doesn't he? Sometimes only one person might be listening, and I think that God can work with that. Just look at the story of Moses, how one man listening changed the course and the future of the people of Israel. Can you imagine what would have happened if a lot of people were listening together and responding to the same call? Just imagine. Can you imagine a collective response to something that is happening in our world? Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that already taking place? Isn't that what the Black Lives Matter movement is all about? And what about comfort? Is it always comfortable for us to be on holy ground? Doesn't it sometimes cause us to be a little nervous? Doesn't it sometimes make us a little afraid that we might just be getting ourselves into something more than we have bargained for? I'm sure that sometimes Moses felt that way. Who am I, he says, that I should go to Pharaoh? Sometimes we might ask the same question. What can I possibly do to affect the change that is needed in our world? Sometimes we just want the difficult things to go away. But take heart. As God speaks to Moses, God also speaks the same thing to us. God's promise to Moses is that I will be with you. Where have we heard that before? Jesus says the same thing, doesn't he? I will be with you always, even until the end of time. So we have an ally, don't we? We have a partner whenever we respond to the call of God. Our God is the great I am, or how I like to put it, God of the eternal present. 
I am who I am is the one who speaks to us, who is the one who sends us messages, who sends us burning bushes. If we have our eyes and our ears open, we will be led in ways that we could hardly ever fathom. And Jesus is our guide on how we should behave. Jesus is our example on how we are called to respond. Jesus never shies away from the difficult task, but in those moments of difficulty goes to a quiet place and prays to the source of all his strength and fortifies himself for the difficult actions that he will take. And his action will be one of self-sacrifice. Jesus is what I like to call all in when it comes to accomplishing the mission of God. God's mission for us is to reconcile, is to love, is to forgive, to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captive free and to treat all human beings with dignity and respect. Now the Apostle Paul in the reading today puts it like this, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Amazing stuff, eh? This is how Jesus lives and responds to the call of God, right? And don't worry if you're going in the wrong direction. You know, we can't always get it right. Sometimes we will make mistakes. Just look at Peter, one of Jesus' favorite disciples and friends. One moment, Peter is surprising Jesus with his declaration that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And then, in the next breath, when Jesus reveals that he must suffer and even die in order to accomplish his mission, Peter blurts out, Oh, forbid it, Lord! This must never happen to you. And Jesus' response to Peter is a little less than what Peter was looking for, isn't it? Get behind me, Satan, Jesus says. You are a stumbling block to me. What? This is the message that Jesus gives to Peter when Peter gets it wrong. Don't worry. There will always be a sign or at least a helpful person in our lives, that, or even a significant event that will straighten us out and reel us back in whenever we're going down the wrong path. Jesus then admonishes the disciples that if we are going to be Jesus' followers, then we must deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. Yes, my brothers and sisters, it's not always easy to respond to the call of God. It wasn't going to be easy for Moses either when he turned aside and went to the burning bush, was it? There would be many obstacles on his mission to set God's people free. But Moses knew, and we know Jesus knew, and I think we should also know that our support of God will always be with us. Jesus walks with us all the way until the work is done. The Holy Spirit fills us with the energy, with the strength, with the hope, with the patience, perseverance, and whatever else we might need in order to accomplish whatever God might be calling us to do. So as we continue to be a part of and witness to all of the change that is taking place in our world, we are blessed to see this quest for justice, for equality, for fairness, and dignity for every human being, especially those who are black, those who are native indigenous, those who are LGBTQ2, expand. This quest, this movement is expanding to all aspects of our society, to all corners of the world, and more lately, to the sports world. And it is amazing to see this issue of racism and discrimination might make us feel a little uncomfortable, 
especially if we are of white privilege. But I believe that we are on holy ground. We fight the fights that we know we can win, and we also fight the fights that need to be fought. And this is a fight that needs to be fought. And I pray that justice will be done and that real change will take place. Amen? Amen.